Hello everyone and welcome to a most impressive game that happened yesterday in round 6 of this year's Shah Jah Masters. Uh, it is Indian Grandmaster Muli Kartakian versus uh, Ukrainian Grandmaster Vitaly Bernardsky. And it's a game where, uh, well, uh, obviously if it's a miniature, in modern times miniature is considered a game that lasts uh, no more than 30 moves, often less than 30 moves. And uh, it's hard to pinpoint where uh, Black uh, actually made a mistake here. So uh, as a lot of you guys have suggested this one, let's check it out. And this is not the first time uh, we've checked out a game by uh, uh, Mr. Murli Kartakin here. Uh, th there's a brilliant game that we already covered by him, at least one uh, uh, th that you guys I'm sure have seen, but just in case you haven't, uh, will be the first link in the description below. So that being said, let's check out this and uh, what uh, what really happened. So Murli uh, has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to e4. We have pawn to e6, the French defense is on the board, uh, d4, d5, and for those of you who are uh, thinking it, no, I I'm not just showing this because uh, it's the French defense. Knight to d2, uh, the Tarash variation. Uh, we have pawn to c5 and now knight g to f3. We have a, a trade in the center, captures, captures on d4. Knight to f6 going after the e4 pawn and now e captures on d5. So a lot of captures, but this is the uh, current theory of this line. Knight to 2 to f3 and now bishop to b4 with check. And now it would be a terrible mistake to play c3 here because if you play this, the knight captures on c3 is close to winning for black, if not outright winning. The problem is after you trade here, bishop captures on c3, uh, it comes with check and you, you might be thinking, okay, I'm, I will gladly give up the rook for two pieces. No, black will just take the knight on d4. And then after the knight captures, queen captures on d4. And black now has um, uh, one, two pawns and there's not all that much that white has to show for it. let's say rook to c1 goes after the bishop black will just castle here and black is just much much better here so instead after bishop to b4 check bishop to d2 this is still well-known theory uh, and here uh, there are a couple of moves that uh, reach this position uh, bishop to c5 a fairly rare move and now uh, there is a game where c3 was played also knight to b3 is a known move but here uh, we have bishop to b5 check and it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game uh, so let's see how Vitaly uh, replies to this. He goes uh, bishop to d7, blocks check. Bishop captures with check, knight captures, and now both players castle. So castles, castles, and here Morley plays queen to e2. He develops the queen, connects the rooks, and is ready to bring the rooks into the game. We have bishop captures on d4. Uh, might seem like an uh, uh, like an odd move, but uh, uh, here um, uh, Vitaly is saying that the knights are, are uh, stronger than... Uh, the, the bishop here and you might consider queen to b6 just putting pressure on the knight and going after that b2 pawn but he decides to trade first captures captures and now queen to b6 attacking the knight and the b2 pawn knight to b3 and now rook f to c8 putting pressure on the c2 pawn so pawn to c4 attacking the knight and now knight back to e7 and here we have bishop to c3 placing the bishop on this diagonal and uh, saying that i might be interesting uh, interested in in a quick checkmate here so knight to f5 and now rook f to d1 putting pressure on the undefended knight on d7 so queen to c7 defending and also putting pressure on that c4 pawn and now just knight to d4 and now, of course, the problem is you don't have time for queen captures on c4 uh, because the knight will capture on f5 and then the knight on d7 will be hanging. So instead, we have knight captures on d4, rook captures on d4, sort of a free rook lift for white here. Knight to f8 now preparing to bring the knight to g6 because you know that there will be a lot of pressure uh, along the g file. Uh, rook to g4 and now knight to g6. And of course, pawn to h4. You are ready to play h5, kick away the knight and win the game. So this is still all perfectly fine for black we have queen to c5 now stopping pawn to h5 and now rook to g3 uh, a very tricky move that invites uh, black to capture on c4 and even though a capturing on c4 is the best move for black it is just very hard to, to decide to actually play this because you know that h5 is coming once everything gets traded off to give you an example if queen captures on c4 and uh, uh, be mindful this is the strongest move for black queen captures rook captures Pawn to h5 kicks away the knight, and once the knight moves, rook captures on g7 with check. King f8, now even h6, you're going to capture on h7 next, and it just looks really, really bad. Uh, for example, knight to f5 attacks the rook, okay, you're going to capture on h7, now you're threatening to win the rook on a8, so king to e7 has to be played. Now rook to c1 with the idea of maybe bishop to e7 check to win the rook, uh, and although it, this looks very bleak for black, you, you can actually play knight to d4, you stop uh, any, any checks, and now even uh, threaten knight to e2, and the game continues, let's say king to f1, uh, and only now, only now pawn to e5. 
Uh, but in the game, after this rook to g3 move, uh, Vitalik played pawn to e5 right away. And this allows the white to continue the attack uh, very fiercely. So pawn to h5 chases away the knight. Knight to f4 attacks the queen and queen to g4 now. Threatens checkmate on g7. We have pawn to g6. And now how do you continue this? And this is a, a very important moment for uh, Murli here. And it's a very important moment uh, in the life of uh, every attacker or everyone that wishes to uh, consider themselves an attacker. Uh, the point is you could capture. You could also try maybe h6. Maybe you can wiggle uh, the, the queen all the way to f6 and then deliver queen to g7 checkmate. It's very unlikely because the black queen has access to the f8 square but here is a, a mark of a true attacker bring another piece into the attack rook a to e1 it, it also comes with tempo uh, now the e5 pawn is hanging and all of these threats remain with you having an extra uh, rook in the attack so uh, always be mindful of that and now how can black defend this it's it looks like a, a really bad position and perhaps maybe an engine would hold this i'm going to show you a line that sort of allows black to defend uh, which goes rook to e8 uh, i mean it's uh, it looks like a, a move that uh, you should play because it just defends the pawn but now let's say h captures knight captures on g6 and pawn to b4 always pawn to b4 i mean I, I don't uh, think we even need to discuss this anymore. Let's say queen to c6 and now queen to h5. Now you are threatening to, uh, to gobble up the e5 pawn. And now after, let's say, rook a to d8, you will just play rook to h3. And it seems like, okay, you, you can just resign this, but perhaps it is possible to defend. Queen to f6, you allow queen captures on h7 check, king to f8, and black uh, still is hanging on. Whether black can survive the game, it's hard to say, but, uh, you know, there's no clear way to win this. However, after rook to e1, uh, here uh, Vitaly played pawn to f6. And sometimes I know pawn to f6 is the strongest move. There uh, even uh, were moments where I ask you guys to, pa to pause the video and find the absolute best move for black. And sometimes the answer is pawn to f6. Uh, but this is not one such occasion. So here, pawn to f6 was played. H captures on g6. H captures on g6. And now, uh, this is move 26. Feel free to pause the video and win the game for Murli uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this, uh, well, uh, move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Rook to E4. So congratulations to everyone who found that, but also congratulations to everyone who found Bishop to D2 or Rook to F3. The idea is basically the same. You want to give up any of your pieces for this Knight on F4 that uh, pretty much holds Black's position together. Knight to E4 is the, is the more, most forcing line. So this is what Morley played. Now he's just going to capture the Knight here and there's not all that much you can do here. Uh, King to f8 was played, trying to get off that g file, but it doesn't matter. Now you don't even have to play, even though rook captures on f4 is winning. Uh, queen to h4, we have pawn to g5, attacking the queen, and now just queen to h6 with check. And he was in this position on move 29 that Vitaly Bernatsky resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. The black king is in check, and it really doesn't matter uh, what you play. Uh, the, the, the white queen has now fully infiltrated. Let's say you play queen to f7, now no, just rook captures on f4 and how do you defend if you capture with this pawn then the rook comes into the game if you capture with this pawn then the f6 pawn uh, just gets gobbled up by the queen and then you get checkmated uh, for example captures queen captures on f6 king goes here rook to h3 and now of course uh, th there's no uh, there's no escape. Even if you try king to d7, first rook to h7 check. Now the king has to go back and that's it. You're going to play king to e8, even queen to e6 with check, uh, king to f8, and now rook to h8 checkmate. Oh, this is only one of the one of the possibilities, but pretty much everything else you do also ends in checkmate. So no, uh, no real point in continuing. And look at those pawns. This pawn on e5, this pawn on g5, of course, uh, yeah, you cannot defend this. So it's hard to say, uh, it's not really hard to say where black uh, went wrong because of course f6 is the um, uh, the final losing move by black uh, but you could also say that uh, here in this uh, position where black played pawn to e5 instead of going for that weird tricky line that we've discussed first you capture then you allow h5 then you allow rook captures on g7 and then only block the bishop after all that is said and done with pawn to e5 and maybe you know you you, you continue fighting uh, but yeah, uh, e5, uh, definitely a suboptimal move. And then with pawn to f6, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, you, you just get completely destroyed. Uh, so yeah, uh, not, uh, not, not a bad game by either of them. Uh, Vitaly also played a great game, but, uh, you know, one suboptimal move and one mistake is more than enough for a player of um, uh, Murli's caliber. And he definitely uh, ma made um, uh, use of his uh, uh, opportunity that, that arose here.
Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, if you are interested in this, do check out. Uh, I believe we could even consider it more this immortal game. It will be the first link in the description below. So do check that out as well. Uh, I would like to thank David Kimura, AMD Risen Enthusiast Group, GolfSoftware.com, Paul Hinamund, and Gary Shaw for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing uh, to check up on everything else that's happening in the chess world, uh, and of course, um, uh, the wonderful suggestions that you guys send over uh, my way. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.